going to go through these quick, quickly because we don't have a whole lot of time. I'll try to get to where there's a few minutes for questions. But the key thing today, I guess, because all this stuff is on the website, um, the bottom line is what Ken said. We'll still be a good district if this levy fails. But I, I need to tell you it'll be a very different district. The offerings across the board, um, the look of the district will be very different. We're at that point. You can fail one levy, especially when it comes to you a year early. You can't fail a second one when now, if this doesn't pass, the district would have to wait an entire year for uh, new monies, uh, which would be January 14th. So it'd be a, a very different look. So quickly, just didn't want to leave this out. I could do 20 slides. We put them all on one. A few of the things last year, highest achieving in all of Central Ohio, and we went up this year. So because they're holding all of the, the data because of some people not playing nice in Toledo and other schools, um, we don't know exactly where we rank, but we know we're one of the top schools again. Look at the average ACT. 25.1 in all three of our high schools is the average that our kids are getting. I, I need to tell you, that just doesn't happen. You, the state and national average is right about 21, under 22. So again, proud. Top rating we've had um, every year since the distinction has been out. So that's not just this administration. They've done well before. Uh, Newsweek, all three high schools, again, in the top. In Ohio, we, we had all of our high schools in the top 25. Uh, just in the last couple of years, got a couple of blue ribbon schools, which put you in the one, top 1% of the nation. Um, and then, obviously, I don't think you can compare how many Ivies, but you can compare how many kids get their first selection. Where do they want to go? And were they able, and did we give them the tools to be able to get accepted? And we're doing really well with that. All right, good morning, everyone. Morning. Just want to start off with just framing the issue again of what you're going to see on the ballot on November 6th, or earlier if you vote absentee. This is what was on the ballot last November. Last November, the issue that failed was a 7.97 mil issue, wait here, uh, which included a 7.2 uh, operating levy and a 0.77 mil bond issue. They were combined, one issue. Uh, the bond issue was for $25 million that was spread over 15 years, uh, which included classrooms at Glacier Ridge and Deer Run, as well as equipment, technology, and just infrastructure improvements within the district and maintenance improvements. Uh, that is how we fund those within our district, is, is continued to be part of that bond issue. The cost was $244 for every $100,000 of price value or market value uh, for your home. After that, after that levy failure last November, our Good Schools Committee commissioned a, a survey, and we wanted to find out what happened and uh, what was our community's wishes when it came to something like this and continuing the education that we provide. What we learned was that, A, the, the issue was too big. That was, that was the one thing. Bad time to ask, and we don't have a lot of control over the economy, but it was a bad time to ask. Um, and that we would get likely support if we reduced the millage amount. Um, we continued that then, the good schools did in August with an additional survey that showed a couple issues. 40.5% uh, of those who responded moved to our district because of this school district, because of the schools. 91.5%, over 90% said that quality schools are vital to property values. And, and we've certainly seen how our property values have held over the last couple of years during this economic downturn compared to other districts in, or other areas in Franklin County and certainly across the state of Ohio. Uh, and 83.9% said squal quality schools are vital to a strong local economy. That led then to the board deliberating for a couple of months looking at what to put on this ballot issue in November. It, it has been reduced by over a mill. Uh, 6.94 mills, and again, it's a combined operating levy and bond issue. Uh, the operating levy will fund the district through fiscal year 2016, which is June of 2016. And that's in consideration of some of the state changes that are going to be coming. Because if you've heard, the governor will be introducing a new state funding formula in January, February. So that um, includes that, actually, as we look out. Um, the bond issue has been reduced from 25 million to 15.8. Uh, and will be over 13 years instead of 15 years. Uh, and what we heard during those surveys was make do with the buildings you have. So what we've done is taken the bricks and mortar. Glacier Ridge classrooms, Deer, Deer Run classrooms are out of this now. And we're just looking specifically at continuing to fund technology in the district, maintenance equipment, um, and a, a, a commons addition at Davis Middle School and some parking and, and uh, parking lot additions at, at Riverside are actually restructuring there. 
Uh, but that's included. Dropped it from 25 to 15.8 million, uh, which is included. And the cost then dropped from $244 to $213 per year uh, for every $100,000 in home value. Can't mention financial information out there. You can go to our district website under finance, and our monthly financial statements are posted there every month. Our five-year forecast is posted, as well as our annual financial report, which actually the last 10 years is posted there. I want to invite you to do that. Actually, our five-year forecast, we will be revising that, or it is revised, and uh, that will be posted and uh, presented to the board on Monday evening, because five-year forecasts for every district in the state has to be revised and submitted by the end of October. So that will be on this agenda. A couple notes, though. Our cost per pupil for um, not last school year, but the school year before, we don't have last year's yet, was $13,013. That is six in Franklin County, six out of uh, 16 school districts, lower than uh, the districts that are noted there, as well as our administrative costs. And we put that up because we get a lot of questions on that. We're 12th out of 16. We're the fifth lowest uh, for administrative costs per pupil within Franklin County. Uh, and that's listed there as well, just to give you a, a parameter of where we are. But I encourage you to look at the financial data and send any questions to me. Okay, again, while we wind down, I'll, I'll try to go quickly here. Just a few facts so, so you know. Um, we've cut over $15 million. Uh, again, it's always too much, you know, um, staff and central office and so forth. Um, since I've been here, $2.4 million, a million my first year that was reduced out of, out of uh, central office. Um, high school busing, we went to group stops. I think that was a good change. Um, field trips, we've reduced supplementals. Um, and then staff uh, across the board, again, we made some cuts last year, but we got saved uh, in regards to um, 99 teacher retirement and resignations last year. Approximately 50 of those positions we didn't bring back. So we we're able to absorb a lot of that. So we've already reduced last year 7.2 million but a lot of that was uh, taken care of because of the staff. Classified, we have 50 um, resignations slash uh, retirement. So we kind of got lucky. And then we um, made some modifications in our programming too with uh, IB. Um, September, this is very different. Our board came out and um, after about six months of planning, passed a resolution with the cuts if this levy fails. So nobody, you know, there's no meeting after, there's no committee, we'll try to figure it out, it's already done. If the levy fails, we got 125 staff members that will be cut. That's a combination of certified, classified, and administrative positions. Um, technical staff, uh, that's a lot of the secretaries, administrative assistants would be thinned out. And then um, service reductions, we've got a number of things across the board. Um, including high school busing, which would now be eliminated, which worries me and again with some of our kids getting a school and how that would work. International baccalaureate, we would now force kids to go to one high school. Uh, and our numbers, I need to tell you, are up. We had uh, um, hundreds of IB tests taken. We had 2,001 advanced placement classes taken last year that qualified for college credit. 2,001, again, it's off the chart. Um, world languages, music, we lose seven music teachers, we lose art teachers, pay to participate goes from 40 to 75, what it is now, to 400 per activity. Uh, so again, what I worry about is kids and families not having that opportunity. We're not trying to threaten people, but we've got to bring in revenue if we're going to keep it. It's either that or saying we're going to eliminate, eliminate sports. Supplementals, we've got over a half million, which would be at more coaches, a club, um, advisors and so forth. Our gifted services would be cut in half. Librarians at the elementary, which you guys have been so uh, supportive of, um, is going to be, now we're going to be cut in half. So they would be starting to share buildings through the day. And of course, basically field trips would be eliminated. So some quick misconceptions and then I think we're done here. Um, we, we have a great relationship with the city and again, probably as, as good as any place I've ever been. We have a lot of shared services, but the bottom line is we get criticized um, because of expenditures with, with the city. And, you know, I think everyone in here knows, but you would be surprised how many questions I get about buying city trucks, putting in bike paths, um, roundabouts, and so forth. And we know all that is necessary, but those are two different pots. So we just have to, to continue to, to be supportive, but put that word out. Smart boards. You'll go in buildings like Chapman and see smart boards, which are, are obviously high tech in every single classrooms. Most of the time, we didn't buy those. That's PTO and boosters. We get hundreds of thousands of dollars that parents raise 
um, that support it. The irrigation at Jerome, we get that was put in by parents and, and so forth, by boosters. Staff raises, once again, um, we didn't even ask for this. The teachers came to us, froze their uh, raises next year, so we extended the contract. No language changes at zero. Administrative and classified uh, followed suit. Um, Again, I talked about the organization being top heavy and so forth. We're at that point now, the break point of central office stuff shoving down in the buildings, which again will cause a little havoc. And then the bond issue, why, why, why is it all one issue? Why is it not separate? Those of you that were here in the 90s know when Carr Middle School was built, there were two issues. The bond issue passed, Carr Middle School was built. What happened? Operating failed. They couldn't put teachers in it. So um, what happened is that, that building. I think the city used it for a while. It sat finally till another issue could be passed. Steve mentioned state uh, funding. Believe me, with the new biennium, we won't get more money. It's just how much less. And we hope we can. We're fighting to be held, held harmless.